Okay, this is the technical training for the ASCAST demo. This is showing uh, synchronous modeling in the NC environment with NXCAM. Uh, you see we've started up a part file with the um, the assembly act of the underscore setup file is the one we've opened. It actually has two components here. Uh, the one we see currently is the uh, essentially the original model with all the machined faces on there. The other component in the assembly is the ASCAST model. If we have a look at this, uh, we can see that it starts life as a linked body back to the machine model, and then there are several synch synchronous modeling uh, steps here that get it uh, back to the CAST model, essentially just adding some material on these various faces adding a few millimeters of material, I think that's the back side there, yep. and uh, removing the holes here at the end. Uh, the holes will be drilled later. So the cast model would look uh, similar to this. Uh, for this demonstration we have the cast model already prepared. If, uh, if you have extra time or if you want to emphasize this aspect of it, you can actually build this up from scratch. Uh, just kind of unwind these features and it's not too hard to figure out. Uh, at the beginning of the demonstration we, we visit here briefly just to show off the ASCAST model and then we uh, return to the to the machine model to go through an associativity exercise. So back to the machine model we want to make a change here and the change then we'll see um, associatively propagated into the casting model itself and we'll also go and see that the change is, is propagated into the toolpath. Uh, the change we want to make here the change we want to make here is to uh, increase uh, the bearing face of, of this surface. Uh, we're going to do that by pulling these faces towards us using our synchronous modeling tools. So we will do a move face We'll select these three faces on the edge towards us. And we'll move them at an angle about this vector and we can spin it around here by its handle 10 degrees is where we will settle and we'll go ahead and make this change now this is again the change to the base part we have an associative casting model uh, developed from a link body and we have toolpath that we're going to update as well so this is the associativity portion of the demonstration. You can see if we look from the top we've moved this around 10 degrees from about this location to about this location uh, right where the web is for visual reference if you need that. So real quickly we can see that the, uh, the casting model has updated along with us. And if we actually go to the manufacturing application, we can look at the toolpaths and see what happens there. So in the, what happened there was in the manufacturing application, this setup is the work part. So that's what we have. And then if we look at our operation, we can see that it is actually out of date. So we will regenerate it. But before we do that, we should replay it just so that we can see what it is. And you can see that it, the toolpaths are lined up with what the, uh, the previous surface looked like before we made our change. So the toolpath is out of date for that reason and we can generate it
to see the update. Now because of the geometry change that we made, this update will take uh, a little bit in excess of 30 seconds on my computer, um, something along those lines. Uh, this is a fine opportunity to talk about the benefits of associativity. Force the idea that associativity is uh, kind of a foundation to uh, to the NX application and to the PLM process in general. And lots of goodness comes from associativity. Uh, we've seen the associativity to the uh, to the casting model, and we can see it here in the toolpath as well. Toolpath updates do not happen automatically the way geometry updates happen because uh, it's always important to give the programmer an opportunity to review changes before he goes ahead with them. So we can see then that the toolpath has been updated. To suit the new geometry. And we can carry on looking at the at the next piece of this demonstration. The next change that we want to make is to go back to the casting model itself. And look at this last offset region. So we're going to change this, uh, this particular offset in our casting model. The story is for this demonstration that uh, these faces are important to the function of this gearbox. That's the reason we made the initial change here. Uh, the bearing face has been increased. Uh, it's an important face and we have to machine this precisely. Um, because it's a big chunk on the casting, this is a place where we often see variation in the casting. So we're going to go back and, and uh, describe that now. So uh, simply by opening up this synchronous feature we can change the amount of material on this face. The nominal would be 5. It was modeled at a nominal 5 millimeters of casting material on top of our machine faces. But as a, as a set of castings come in, we see that it's uh, heavy on material. And we're going to actually increase this out to an additional 10 more millimeters of offset because of the castings that we have gotten. Because the casting model was developed with these synchronous features, uh, it's just simplicity itself to go back, modify the synchronous feature, uh, pull it out to a new, a new value, and we're done. We've adjusted our casting model to account for the, uh, the actual castings that have come in. And now all we have to do is go back and take a look at what that does to our toolpath. and we can actually change our display part back to the original part itself so we can see the toolpath a little better. And I think we're going to look at this in the program order view. That's a little nicer. And we'll generate this one more time. We can see that it's out of date again. It's out of date because the, uh, the casting model has changed. We're using 
we're using that casting model as the blank for this operation, which is why the, uh, the toolpath is sensitive to that stock amount. Now when our castings come in and they're not quite uh, nominal dimensions as we expect them to be, uh, if we have cuts like these that are multi-pass multi cuts, uh, it really depends on how much material is there. If there's extra material, uh, we need extra cuts to get through it. Um, if they actually come in a little bit below nominal but still usable, then we'd like to be able to actually reduce the amount of cutting that we do uh, if we can. So just in the interest of efficiency and effectiveness, we can, uh, we can inspect our castings, uh, adjust our stock models, our casting models appropriately, and make sure that our toolpath is, uh, is clearing all the material and not wasting any time. It makes, it, uh, makes the program run better on the machine, more effective, better productivity, all those good things. So we can see now that originally we had three passes and now we have double that. We have six passes on this side. So our toolpath has responded to the increased stock. Our cutting is, uh, is effective and efficient and the results are good on the machine. And that concludes this demonstration.